Everybody's favorite wizard, Wizard Fu, here with another game development video. Right now I'm working on animations. Man, it's been a long time since I've been working on art, and it's super nice to be working on art. I'll tell you that. I love working on art. It's so easy. Programming is hard. Art is easy. All you artists out there, you got the easy job. All you musicians out there, even easier than that. So if yeah, as you can tell, I'm working on these uh, animations for the um, uh, for the player, right? They look like they look like they're gray, like they're made out of stone right now. But that's only because uh, I'm just dialing in the tone and also giving it uh, a palette that can be ch palette swapped at runtime. See how I'm yellow? I'm the I'm the yellow guy, and he's the green guy. And um, all every uh, every voxel that is in a certain range gets translated to his team color or my team color. If I run around the map, you'll we'll be able to see like other people at um, uh, with different colors as well. Everybody's there's like there's some there's the the cyan color guy and the sort of aqua green color guy. Um, but anyways, you see you get the point. There's eight players and everybody's got their own color scheme, right? This is a color that uh, well, that's really deep blue, huh? Um, yeah, so you can kind of tell right away, um, as long as you're not colorblind, that you that uh, this is that player or that player. Um, I'm also gonna do some kind of like uh, maybe like a, a sort of like a, tri a uh, like a triangle, like a team indicator or something like that underneath players that are your enemies, so that you'll be able to tell even if you're color colorblind who's your enemy. Um, but uh, this is really neat to have this um, to have sort of a better quality model, and um, I'll show I'll. I'll tell you what I'm trying to do here, uh, what I am doing with uh, with the models. So let's take a look at male idol here, A0 here. This is uh, what I started with, um, sort of refining this model. It used to be all skin colored and whatever, whatever, but his skin color, so I've got his pant colors. He's got four different pant colors right here, the top gray ones. He's also got these four, like these other gray colors, which are his skin. And then um, these yellow colors, which represent his eyes and the sword, and this white, these white colors represent the sword. Um, but the yellow colors are changed at runtime. Let's look at the data for that. Um, let's see, this is Skybot. Skybot has, has it too. So it has this hue shift piece of data, which stores some structures. I made some simple structures to represent these hue shifts. And um, basically it's hue shifting colors eight through 15 and shifting them to the color of the team. Uh, but there's also, uh, let's go to render component, which has these hue shift types. There's also, I've got planned for being able to shift colors based on your team, based on your current skin color, because you'll be able to customize your actual character before you, you'll create a character. You're gonna have skin, clothes, different kinds of clothes. You're gonna be able to get armor um, from matches, like you'll, you'll like get a certain currency and you can purchase armor from the ship when you're back aboard the ship. Um, so yeah, so all of these can be changed their hue a little bit, uh, depending on whatever your choices are as a player. Maybe you want to have purple skin or, or, uh, whatever kind of skin you want to have, you know, clothes too. And then you'll also be able to have different kinds of clothes and different kinds of armor. And armor pieces will be good, will be divided up into like helmet, shoulders, you know, like breastplate. There's a whole, whole lot of different sections, kind of like Diablo in a sense. Um, so, so there's those hue shift types. And then the hue shift types get a, get loaded in render component.cpp and then applied in refresh model when you actually go to take a model and you refresh it. This is actually ref rotating the model's voxels to the current positions and updating its 2D position after that. And then also shifting the color as needed. So it goes and just basically just, you know, looks to see if that certain voxels within that range of palette and then changes it. Um, this is one of the beauties of having written my own uh, Magic of Voxel importer. Basically, I just took a look at Magic of Voxel's file format and wrote my own, you know, loader. So I'm loading in a .vox, V-O-X, file format into WraithBinder. And since I have all the data for um, for models in my own model dot, my own model structure, I can easily go and change things like that, like change the voxels. This is super sweet to have an engine this flexible. Um, so I'm excited about this. 
uh, being able to shift colors like this and also getting them getting the model so it's a, a lot more aesthetically pleasing than it used to be for, for some reason um, I don't know. It was I was I had translated this over from 2D into 3D, and it just didn't look as good in 3D because he needed to be a bit thicker. Um, he needed to be a bit thicker and a bit more muscly compared to Songbringer's, um, you know, sort of like thin and wiry look uh, because it just it looked too thin. It looked way too thin and from the side um, in Wraithbinder because it's 3D. Um, you've got these. You know, from the side view, he used to be like a whole voxel or two thinner, and it just looked horrible. He looked too 2D. He looked like a billboard, almost. So that really helps to make him thicker, but also simplifying the voxels really helps too. So, um, like, using only one or two colors for the pants. In fact, I'm probably going to just simplify that down a bit even more. And, um, and of course, as you, as you customize your character, you'll be able to have clothes on and armor and those kinds of things. And here's what I'm thinking for that. Um, probably what I'm going to do is I'll take this and I'll just basically, you know, delete out the sword and, um, and then put the sword into its own file, which is sort of like a layer file. Um, so there'll be this, this model right here with him with his, his, you know, his bare chest and um, probably I will even take out the eyes. So he won't even have eyes, so you'll be able to choose your own eye style, right? Maybe maybe you want to have like a certain um, shape of eyes, um, and also hair too. So like you, you maybe you want to have a, um, a mohawk, somebody else has a fro, whatever. Um, these kinds of things will be deleted from this base model and then put into their own separate model, a separate model which will just be the hair or just the sword or whatever like that. And then I'll go at runtime and I'll I'll um, conglomerate them together, pull them together into I'll take a load like all five of different models, like a model for the base uh, character's body, a model for their weapon, a model for their hair, a model for their eyes, a model for their clothes, all the models for their armor. And so it'll be like a layered uh, armor system. So this is pretty neat. Um, to have the, this is the this has been the vision for Wraithbinder for the whole time. This is how I plan to monetize the game is by selling skins um, because this will be a multiplayer game. That's, at least that's the plan for now. So this has got to be in here. This this armor system's got to be in here from from the from a pretty early on stage. So I'm trying to you know do this early enough that uh, when I actually go and you know want to draw a ton of armor and stuff like that, it's all ready. The system's all ready to go. So yeah. And it'll 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 be optimized too. I'll take say say you're layering together ten different models. It'll it'll layer it all together into one um, one model file, which gets cached in memory. So you never really it'll never really have to recompile the model for the player. So let's undo those. Put that sword back in there for now. And uh, yeah, so that's it for this video. I'm having a good fun week here doing art. And uh, man, I just Gosh, art is a really, really soothing thing for the soul for me. I love doing art, and uh, I'm so excited to be making this character model now because it's helping the game to feel more like a real game. Before, I had not really focused too much on animation at all because I wanted to focus more on gameplay and systems and things like that. But now, it's really it's it's almost necessary to put some art in there and make it better than than uh, better than bad. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for watching. That's it for this video. Check you next time.